The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. The Paranormal Field. Welcome, everybody, to the Paranormal View right here on the Para-X Radio Network. I want to thank everybody tonight for listening, no matter where you're listening from, whether it's here at the site or from around the world. We appreciate each and every one of you. And if you're not somewhere other than, I mean, if you are somewhere other than here, please come on over to para-x.com and join in the chat, and you'll have a wonderful time. Uh, tonight, we got a great show, and uh, I have been sick all week uh, about to lose my voice so I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking tonight and Barbara said she's got about 15 pages of questions (laughs) so uh, we have Barbara Duncan with us tonight hello hello and we will have Jeffrey Gould with us in just a little bit he uh, had been somewhere and he's on the bus getting back and he'll let me know as soon as he gets back and we'll get him right into the chat so since he's not here and we have such a great guest tonight. We're going to go ahead and let Barbara introduce him and get started on our show. We have Mr. Mark Phillips with us, uh, who is the executive producer of My Ghost Story on A&E Bio Channel. It's the highest rated series on that network, and he also produces the bio specials Holiday Hauntings. He's produced The Protectors for A&D and has served as executive producer of Inside Predator Task Force for Court TV, which is True TV now, and the executive producer of SWAT USA California, also for Court True. Um, He's developed and produced several shows for um, television networks, and uh, his bio is about as long as my arm and quite impressive. Um, I, I just have to tell you folks that the My Ghost Story is probably one of the most fascinating shows on what I call the Haunted Channel at the moment. Uh, welcome, Mark Phillips. Thank you. Nice, nice, nice to yes. be here. Yes, welcome. The, to your, I, I love your intro. It's just scary as hell. I, <laughs> I, ran, and lo- I ran and locked my front door. <laughs> <laughs> We had uh, uh, one of the guys that uh, was one of our co-hosts uh, who had to step away for a while. Uh, he had a friend uh, in Pennsylvania that uh, did those for us. And well, it, he did a great job. Yeah, he did. Really, really great. Uh, and I, I thank them for that, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, taking time because I know you've been really, really busy. You've been hitting a lot of the other networks uh, and shows. Um but I, I want to thank you for taking the time to, to speak you're, you're, with us. You're, you're very welcome. It, because my ghost story doesn't have a host, per se, I've sort of thrown myself into the fray to, um, to, get, the, to get the word out. And, um, and I really appreciate you uh, putting, me on, putting me on your show. Uh, it's much appreciated. My ghost story um, runs Saturday nights on A&E Bio. Um, it runs at um, 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific. And um, the last few weeks, and I think for the next couple of weeks, there are actually two new episodes every week. And at some point, I think three weeks from now, new episodes of Celebrity Ghost Stories are, are being delivered. So we'll be sharing tonight with them. They're kind of our companion piece. But my ghost story is the highest-rated show on... Um, any bio and and um, last week, uh, last Saturday, it, it delivered the highest ratings in the Saturday night time slot in the network's history. And, and wow. when the when the network exec called to tell me that, the thing that ran through my head was like, I don't know, <laughs> you could. <laughs> 
<laughs> go figure. I, I, I mean, I love the show. I, 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 I love producing it. I love meeting the people who, who come on the show. And if I can just describe it for your audience, it's a, sure. a, sh- a show that features real people, real, honest-to-goodness, everyday people who have had these paranormal experiences, and they have had either by themselves or through others, they've had these experiences documented on camera or on tape. So every storyteller that comes to our show brings with them actual evidence of, of, their, of their experience. And some of the experiences are extremely spooky. Some of them are demonic. Some of them are quite spiritual. Um, there's, a whole, there's a whole range of different kinds of stories that we, we have on the show. Some of them, some of them are even romantic. Um, but it's fascinating material, and the audience obviously um, is gravitating to it just by virtue of the number of people who are watching it. Now. Well, it, it also, in watching a lot of the stories, um, the, the believability of your guests uh, are quite amazing. The, 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 their presence and their... Um, uh, That's because they're just regular folk. You know, they're just their stories people. are quite touching in a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Th- that's, definitely where not the sh- that's where the, the show began. It began with the whole idea of, um, in fact, this is how the network described it to me after I pitched it to them. They said, think of it as a bunch of regular people sitting around a campfire telling ghost stories and then showing you the evidence that their stories are true. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I took that whole notion and ran with it. If you watch the show, you'll see that mm-hmm. it looks as though they're sitting in a chair that is surrounded by a dark, gloomy night. And off on the left-hand side and the right-hand side in lower screen, you'll see uh, a, a orange um, pulsating glow, which is the mm-hmm. campfire. And... Um, uh, people who, uh, the, the storytellers who, who come to the show, they sit in this chair. It's a very spooky chair. <laughs> and, um, um, you know, they really get into it. Uh, but they're, they're, the reason the believability factor is there, Barbara, is because they're, they're just real people. They're just ordinary, they're just ordinary people. That in, in, in a lot of cases, they're not ghost hunters. They're just regular people. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, we do have a lot of... Um, paranormal investigators on the show because oftentimes what happens is somebody has this experience in their in their home or workplace or wherever and and it freaks them out and they can't quite figure it out and they reach out to an investigator and the investigator comes and and investigates and ends up capturing some incredible evidence so there are stories where we have you know regular folk and investigators who come on the show well, now, now, what was your background in the paranormal before this? Um, were you interested in it all? Do you believe in the paranormal, or did you believe in it before the series started? Well, I've always been I've, I've been interested in it for some time. I don't know if um, you guys know there was a, a paranormal investigator, a very brilliant guy by the name of Peter James. Yes, he 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 died about six seven years ago from from cancer. Yes, and he took me on a um, a one-on-one um, investigation of the Queen Mary. I'm, I'm, I live and work in Los Angeles, and he, I went down and met him in Long Beach, and he, he took me right into the bowels of that boat, and it flipped me out. It was really quite extraordinary. And, um, you know, he took me to the morgue, and he took me to the swimming pool and the dressing area, and... Um, you know, we'd be hearing banging coming from where banging shouldn't be coming. We're passing through these spots that were freezing cold and the most bizarre smells would come to us. I mean, it was just, it, it, it really, it really kind of turned my head. Uh, but I could never, this was probably, uh, not probably, it was 1992. And I, I, you know, I would talk to people about doing some kind of a paranormal show, and they looked like they looked at me like I was speaking Chinese. Um, 
and the, the the project that I wanted to do with Peter James was called the Ghosts of Rock and Roll. I went to go and try to try to reach the spirits of of um, people who who had died in in the rock and roll industry. Wow. But um, I could never convince anybody, you know, to do it. And I developed a few things here and there. And what happened was is I had this really incredible project that I did for Court Court TV, which is now True TV, called Inside Predator Task Force. And basically, we put together a a, a team of of um, Southland cops who went after child predators. And we caught 15 guys, and it was an it was an amazing show that got a huge rating for um, for Court TV. And somebody at A and E saw it and said, "Wow, let's let's reach out to this guy." So they reached out to me and told me that it was this is a great inside TV phrase. I said, "It's really good sticky television." <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, uh, they said, "What would you like to do?" And I said, "Well, I'd like to do another one of these child predators things because I had I had all this extra footage." So they bought a show from me called The Protectors, and um, it didn't work. It didn't work at all. And at the same time, they 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 a- they asked me to produce a special um, for a, for a, a, a paranormal show that I pitched them, and it was called Hauntings Revealed. And basically, it was just regular people telling their stories mm-hmm. um, and showing the evidence that they had taken. I had, I had, I had some stories in mind. I knew, uh, I knew about the evidence. Uh, you know, I just pulled it from the Internet. It was simple. I butt edited it all together, and I sent it to them, and they circled around it for a while, and they passed and said, no, 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 no. And then in August of 2008, they called me up, and they said, you know what? We do want to do that show but we want to call it my ghost story and when they said that i went my goodness these guys are brilliant i mean they just so know how to brand a show because if you think about it and the fact that it's for bio and it's called my ghost story i mean it just makes such sense but the problem was it was in august and they said it was the end of august and they said that they wanted to have the show air on halloween which led me it left me very very little time to do it properly, and they, and they said, make it look like I survived, <laughs> uh, which is a which is a Sunday night show. It's a very good show yeah, on yeah. Um, on on bio, and and basically um, it's set in black limbo. The storytellers sit in black limbo, and it's very static. Um, and I, given the amount of time that I had, I I just went with it. I I aped, uh, I survived. And as I was delivering it, I was saying to myself, I don't like this. this. This show does not have my signature on it. This does not like, this This, this is not the way that I want to do this. But I had such limited time, I gave it to them, they aired it, and um, it did It did very well. But the head of the network looked at it and said, I don't, you know, this show doesn't look good. This, this, is not, this is not a good looking show. What's Phillips doing here? Um, I didn't have, um, I think, some of the best people working with me on the on on that special. But one of the execs at A and E came back to me and said, "You know, how would you change it?" And I listed how I would make it look, and I and, and I made it look like it looks right now. And uh, they said, "Okay, we'll give you another special." So they gave me another special. I made it look great. I shouldn't say just say I made it look great. There was some of the people working on it with me, like my. My co-executive producer, Hugh D. Island, we really knocked it out of the park, and um, it did a great number. And then they picked up a series, and we've been we've been making shows ever since then. Now, uh, I just wanted to let everybody know that uh, we now have Jeffrey Gould with us. Welcome, Hello. hey Jeff. Hi, I'm sorry I'm late. That's all right. You're in L.A. Everybody's late in L.A. <laughs> well, the thing is, is uh, I'm, in, I'm an actor, and I'm in the industry, and they were screening um, one of the student films I'd worked on down at USC, and it ran much later than it was led to believe that it would be. Well, I'm glad you're here with us. Yeah. Now, Jeffrey also has a lot of uh, ghost stories, too. But, uh, yeah, but none are on video. None are on video, and that's, that was one of the things that uh, one of the questions I had uh, what is the criteria that uh, you look for from those that want to uh, want to be on your show? 
good visual evidence and auditory evidence as well. I mean, you know, right? We 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 use pictures. We use um, video. Uh, we use EVPs. We use actual tactile evidence. I mean, mm-hmm. sometimes it's pictures of scratchings and you know all that kind of stuff. So it, it, run, it runs it runs the gamut, but there has to be there has to be evidence, or else it doesn't fit our. I hate to use the word formula, but that's what it is. Right. Well, that that mm-hmm. would be right, though. Well, now, when when you choose somebody, uh, do you go to where they live to do the filming of it? No. Okay. Let me tell you the process. Okay. Um, people submit stories to us. And um, we then ask them to film themselves telling their story. And we give them a template of questions, which they answer on tape. Or we, we do that over Skype. And um, they submit their evidence to us. And if we believe that they can be decent storytellers, because generally they're just ordinary folks, so... You know, a lot of people clam up on camera, but, you know, we, we, we work our way through that. So once we found good storytellers with good evidence, and there's always two storytellers, a, a, a story, we then fly them to Los Angeles. Um, we put them up in a hotel. We take them to a studio, and we um, sit them down in that set that I spoke about earlier on that ghostly chair that I talked about earlier. <laughs> and and they, um, the interview that we conduct with them is about an hour, and we get them to tell the story. Then um, we send a field producer to their location, and they shoot what we call point-of-view B-roll. Right. It's not, it's not reenactment. It's just we, we, we then tell their story cinematically uh, at, at the location. And then we cut it all together. And I, and I say that in one sentence, and cutting it all together is a monstrous job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and it ends up being, you know, a story. We have five or six stories per episode. That's kind of how it works. Sorry. And I can tell you right now, if indeed any of your audience wish to submit a story, they simply need to send an email to myghoststory at mppt.tv. Again, it's myghoststory at m as in Mark, p as in Phillips, p as in production, t as in television, dot tv. And that, that stands for Mark Phillips Films Television? I yeah, mean? Films and Television, yeah. Because Films is spelled with a P-H. <laughs> I noticed that. I was, and, and Television is spelled... And Television with is spelled with a P-H as well, I know. <laughs> it's kind of... It's, 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 I don't know. It, it gets me attention. <laughs> uh, well, now, the reason Jeff was asking that is Jeff types up a whole synopsis uh, of our show, uh, and he puts all the links and everything also in the synopsis. So oh, I see. Okay. He'll, he'll tell you where you can go see all that stuff at also. And your your audience should also know they, they can always go and visit the bio uh, website. Yes. There's, there's actually a link there to uh, submit stories to us as well. Good. But they can also watch episodes of the show, and there's, there's some behind-the-scenes stories that we've done. Now, is that uh, I was looking at some of those. Were those like with some of your crew? Yeah. Uh, where they've had things happen? Exactly, yeah. I, I, I think there's one there with me, too. Really? Yeah. So, what yeah. did you have happen? Um, we had this story of a woman whose son was born in 1977, and he died when he was about 10 years old. And ever since then, this woman, at very distinct moments in her life that are somehow connected to her son, finds money. And the money is always from 1977. Really? Yeah, it's a very interesting story. And I'm sitting in the control room watching her talk, and and I really identified with the story because I find money all the time. It's just something that has always happened. In fact, I I found a penny today. Walking down the street with my daughter to get her a pair of jeans, and boom, there's a penny. And um, my father, who passed away when I was quite young, 
he always taught me that when you, because he was very superstitious, and, and he, he um, taught me that when when you find money, you put it in your left pocket. Actually, he said, what you do is you spit on it, then you put it in your left pocket. I guess it's an old English tradition. I took out. I don't spit on it. I just put it in my left pocket. And, then, <laughs> and when money, you know, when when I have like more than ten or eleven coins in my pocket, I then put it into a box. I have a box here filled with money. And anyhow. So I'm watching this story, and I'm just fascinated by it. And it's coming to an end, and we're doing what we call the jib shots at the end, where there's no questions asked. And I walked out to my car to get something. And as I'm walking back into the studio, I find a penny. And lo and behold, it's a 1977 penny. Really? It wow. kind of blew my mind. And I, you know, I went and, uh, to the stage and, and introduced myself to the woman and uh, gave her the money, and she flipped out. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's inter- interesting. The the one that you got to watch though is uh, it's at the bio website. It's of Steve Bowler, who's one of our. Um, he's a very very talented uh, videographer. We just simply call them shooters, and he he's one of the people that we send out um, to do this point of view B roll that I referenced earlier. And um, he was doing a, uh, some B-roll at a at a uh, location in Orange County, which is just south of Los Angeles. And he was pushed and shoved, and and um, he, he just had a, a, a real experience. Wow! And then and then he started videotape. He was videotaping and picking up all these weird images and um, um, uh, mists and like crazy stuff. So uh, when we when I found out about it, I said, well, you know what? Maybe we should do this as a story on the show. And then when I discussed it with the network, they thought, mm, although it's interesting, it's it's breaking the fourth wall, and it doesn't really fit the formula of my ghost story. So what we did is we um, we uh, we produced it as a three and a half minute story for the web, and you can see it at the bio at the bio channel um, website. Well, but a yeah. number of our um, camera people have had uh, strange experiences at at the location of, of some of these uh, uh, stories. Um, it, most of them don't want to come forward and um, and go on camera and talk about it. Well, they think somebody make fun of them or something, or um, well, I I found while doing the show. We found a number of stories where people just don't want to. They don't want to discuss it. Wow. Hmm. Does it creep? You know, it's, in, it's interesting. Last week I was at the studio and I'm, I walk in and there, sitting on stage, is a woman, in a police officer's uniform, telling a story, and the evidence is amazing. It's on a security camera, and not only is she a police officer, officer, she's the chief of police. So, I mean, it, I, 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 we've been after the story for a long time, but it, 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 and it took a long time for her to come forward and and say, yeah, okay, I'll do this. And her husband's a policeman, too. And uh, I, I would assume that they probably get to see quite a bit of stuff from the things that they do and places that they have to go. Yeah, well, that's kind of... I've instructed my... Um, staff to try to look for that kind of stuff, you know, where there are strange, where there is strange paranormal activity in and around crime scenes, because it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. That's really fascinating stuff. Because a lot of the stories that we do on the show, they they have a historical um, element to them. I I mean, we were talking earlier about the Queen Mary. I mean, I don't know if you know this, but uh, one man died every three minutes or something aboard that boat. How many times did one man die like that? Oh, wait, I just... Huh? <laughs> one right, man uh, died every three minutes. Anyway. <laughs> when... I've, I've been on the Queen Mary, Mark, and I've had experiences. And I got my only EVP to date on the Queen Mary. Oh, really? Yeah, but uh, my experiences happened when we didn't have any recorders on in, in our cabin. Right. My, uh, my friend Rob and I, I had a ghost dog bark in my face, and we had a some sort of a body or something crash from the hallway um, that shouldn't have been there. I threw the door right open the minute the body
body hit the door and went down to the floor on the outside deck of the corridor, an empty corridor. Yeah, well, as I was explaining earlier, it's a, it's, it's a haunted place. We've done it several stories on the Queen Mary with some remarkable evidence. So, um, Jeffrey, if you ever get anything more than just an EVP there, let's put you on the show. <laughs> so, uh, I've been trying. I've been trying go. to get more. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's really difficult. You know, it, it, it's one thing to get an EVP, but getting actual photographic evidence, it's really difficult. I, oh, I, I've, yeah. I've taken hundreds of photos on the USS Hornet. I haven't gotten so much as an orb there, but a good Class A EVP. Uh, it's just difficult to get photographs. Hmm. Yeah. How, ma how many EVPs? Oh, just one. One really very clear a, uh, Class A EVP. Where is the USS Hornet? Uh, that's in Alameda, California. All right. Yeah. Well, you, what you need to do is you need to go to um, the USS Salem in Quincy, Mass. That's one haunted place. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. USS Salem. I think... Uh, Leanne and uh, Angela has did their show uh, from there, or they've been there and spent the night, something like that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We've we 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 I think we've done two stories from there. It's quite an amazing place. Hmm. Well, uh, I tell you, since uh, our time just kind of like run right on by, that I think we should go ahead and take a. A uh, nice little break here and let, let people go to the potty or whatever or get something to drink. And, uh, Jeff, you want to do the first or second? I, I can do the first. Is Pyrex still kind of having issues? Yes. Or? Yeah, yeah. So this will be sort of like recorded for later. Okay, That's well. it, yeah. Okay, well, again, everyone, I'm sorry for being late, but at least in time to say you're listening to The Paranormal View on para-x.com mostly, and we'll be right back with our guest Mark Phillips after this musical intro. Para-X Radio presents Real Persons of Genius. Real Persons of Genius. Today, we salute you, Mr. and Mrs. Para-X show hosts. Mr. and Mrs. Para-X show hosts. Armed with nothing more than a laptop and a microphone, you hit the air to scare the bejesus out of your audience. What the hell was that noise? Like a dog peeing on a fire hydrant, you always whet our appetite for more. I just can't get enough. Whether it's witches, ghosts, fairies, or Bigfoot, we admire your ability to set aside reality and believe anything anyone tells you. Seek professional help. So the next time you're kneeling in front of your 8x10 glossy of Dave and Tom lighting a candle, remember, if it wasn't for you, I might be able to sleep without the lights on. Mr. and Mrs. Para-X Soho. Para-X Radio Network, powered by CBS. Welcome back, everybody, to the Paranormal View right here on the Para-X Radio Network. And want to welcome back Mark Phillips, executive producer of My Ghost Story. Welcome back, Mark. Thanks. Did the same guy who did your open do that? No. Do, do, do that? <laughs> no. Because that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, there used to be a guy here on uh, uh, that was affiliated with uh, Dave on Parex, and Dave's the uh, owner of Parex, and uh -huh. uh, he did uh, a whole lot of those type of uh, commercials for us, uh, which he did an excellent job on those also. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah. funny. I was laughing my guts out. <laughs> Well, the thing is, I like that radio campaign. Whenever that radio campaign comes on, I listen to it. Yeah. That and the Dos Equis, um, most, uh, what's it, the, uh, the most Equis. interesting man in the world. Right. <laughs> that is a brilliant campaign. It, it is. <laughs> they, they did a great job on that. Uh, one question I wanted to ask you here is, uh, <clears throat> exactly what does an executive producer do? Uh, I run the joint. <laughs> Is that what all executive producers do? Yeah, they refer to us um, as showrunners. Um, I'm the guy that the network looks to to deliver the show and to deliver it on time and um, and under budget. But it has to be under budget because they give me X amount of money, I give them X amount of tape, and uh, 
if if uh, if if I can't do it for the money, then it comes out of my own pocket. Mm. Well, so the producer does all that. What does the director do then? Um, in reality television, nothing. A uh, regular reality TV doesn't have a director, huh? Not really. Not very rarely. Very rarely. Uh, television is a producer's medium. Film is a director's medium. In uh, in motion pictures, the director is the guy. In um, television, the executive producer is the guy. He's the uh, one who generally comes up with the show. Most executive producers in television and this is not a hard rule, but it's a general rule. Most executive producers in television are writers, as I am. I mean, I'm at, at the very heart of it. I'm a writer. and Because um, at the very heart of it, what you're doing is you're getting people to say stuff, and you're cutting it all together, and you're using other people's words to write it. So, um, so essentially, work, that. So you would work very closely with the editor and such like that? Yeah, the in in reality, in alternative television, the a good editor is worth his weight in gold. We have some of the best editors in town who work on this show. That being said, this is kind of an interesting arena because, I mean, there are great editors out there who literally cannot edit this show to save their lives because you have to have a certain temperament to be able to wrap your head around the material and around the stuff that people are saying. You just, not everybody can do it. I've, we've seen, we've brought editors in who were just going, oh, wow, look at this guy, this guy cut Seinfeld for crying out loud. <laughs> but, but they can't, they may be, they, uh, you know, they may have cut Seinfeld, but they can't cut my ghost story. Wow. Well, now... <clears throat> I, I was uh, on the bio channel and I was uh, reading some stuff there, uh, uh, some of the stuff that I think you had done or you had up there. What uh, was the bio channel special holiday hauntings? Oh, that's um, holiday hauntings was a over the course of the show we've had a number of um, stories that took place at Christmas time. And um, I convinced the network that we take these stories and we piece them together and we do a, a Christmas special, which we did. I did pretty good as well. Uh, we're probably going to do some more because we have like a bunch of we have a bunch of really great love stories. Um, so um, we're probably going to do a, a, a um, Valentine's Day special. And then we have a lot of stories that have kind of a real historical significance to them. So we'll probably do some kind of historical hauntings show that could run on July 4th or something like that. Uh, I've always wanted to do a Labor Day special where we take, because there are some great stories where the root of the story is of people who have been working and they come, you, you know, like somebody who dies in an elevator and they're, and they're, and their spirit lingers there, that kind of stuff hmm. for Labor Day. But oh, you people mean think, like, people uh, think it's a tad sick? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would so another like one. Oh, another one is um, to do uh, holy hauntings, where we take because we have a lot of stories that that, that take place in either in um, in churches or in, in church graveyards, that kind of thing. Um, so that's another, they're, they're just ways in which we can put together existing stories as a, as what we refer to in television as a stunt, just to, you know, bring in, bring some interesting promotion and publicity well, sure. to the show. Yeah. Well, that's the only way you can do it is be able to promote it. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But it, but it, those type of things makes it interesting to where it makes somebody want to come and watch it. Yeah. Well, see, I mean, that's the very reason I'm on the air with you because, Aside from the fact that you're a great guy, oh well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, my ghost story is a hard story. is a hard show to promote. Uh, celebrity ghost stories is an easy 
show to promote. Because you got the celebrities telling you got stories. celebrities. Yeah. You know, although Sammy Hagar seems to be in every episode that they do. <laughs> um, well, now, are are you affiliated any with the uh, celebrity ghost stories? No, they're just our companion piece. Uh, they're the companion show to ours. It's a it's a nicely done show. Yeah. I always say nice things about them. Oh sure. And well, know, the advantage that they have is they have a they they can promote it because of the the fact that there are celebrities on. Right. And celebrities, by and Jeffrey, you, I'm sure you understand this. By virtue of their profession, they're good storytellers. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeffrey does a good job at that too. Yes. Uh, well, getting to that to, that comment that you're a writer. Have you have you come across a story that someone's told you that you think I couldn't even write this? I couldn't well, even the, think of it. All the time, all the time. Give you a great example. One of my favorite stories. Um, it takes place in late 2001, early 2002. There's a New York City cop who's assigned to Staten Island. And after 9-11, the um, debris from the World Trade Center was all, it was shipped to Staten Island. And this particular cop and some of his associates, they were assigned to comb through the debris looking for body parts. And stuff started to follow him home. And he would go home and he would see crucifixes on the wall in his kitchen. He took pictures of them. And his clock would stop at, I'm trying to remember the time, I think it's 843, the, the, the time that the, uh, first airplane hit. Hmm. I, I believe it's 843. Right? It, might be, it might be 852 or 848. Whatever. It was 843. Yeah. 843. There you go. Man, my memory is better than... I said. <laughs> and, um, and he's a real gruff New York cop. And it changed his life. And he ended up having a heart attack and left the force. And he wrote a book called Running with the Bulls, which your audience members might want to look up. And it um, documents what he went through during this time period. He's a great guy. He brought me a copy of the book, autographed it for me. You can't write something like that. No. To answer your question, Barbara. Yeah. yeah. Has anything ever followed you, huh? No. Not that I know of. <laughs> as, a, as a single guy, I wish somebody would follow me home. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Need to go to more haunted bars, I guess. <laughs> I will tell you a, a quick story, though. My my father passed away when I was a young man, and um, I was born in England and grew up in Canada, in Toronto, Canada. And my um, my father was a tailor by trade. He was a uh, a woman's tailor, a very talented tailor. And once we immigrated to Canada. He couldn't. He couldn't get hired because everything was mechanized. So he became a drapery tailor, uh, you know, making drapes. Which, if you're a woman's tailor, where you you know cut patterns for suits, you can make drapes in your sleep. So he would always make our drapes in in the house that I grew up in. And um, a couple of years after my dad died. Um, the drapes in my mother's bedroom my father had made, and it, they were literally wall-to-wall, ceiling-to-floor drapes, even though they really hit a window that was, you know, three feet high by three feet, three feet wide. And my mother was laying awake one night, and she told me the story that my father walked out from behind these drapes and walked around in front of the bed, knelt beside the bed, and put his head in her lap, and then, poof, disappeared. 
uh, I, you know, I, I'm telling this story because this is my mother's story, and my mother is the most logical, straightforward, kind of cold and calculated person you will ever meet in your life. And she will not watch my ghost story, and it's very popular in Canada. She won't watch it because it's, as, and this is the quote, it scares the crap out of me. Though crap, she didn't use that word. She used another word. <laughs> well, now, are you from Canada or are you from England? I'm from England, but I grew up in Canada. Ah. Well, Canada is a nice place. I've been to Winnipeg before. Well, you know, I don't want to disparage Winnipeg, but <laughs> you want to see you want to see well, Canada. Go. Go to, <laughs> you, no, no, no. You want to see Canada? Go to Vancouver. Vancouver is one of the nice. greatest cities in the world. And that's out on and, also, the, and that's, also Toronto. Toronto is a fabulous city. Oh, well, Vancouver's on the west coast, right? Yes. That's correct. Yeah, I've never made it out any further than North Dakota. Uh, yeah, I'd like to make it out through that way sometime, but uh, no, you should go to you should go to Vancouver. Vancouver is um, it's uh, even more beautiful than San Francisco, which I think is one of America's most beautiful cities. Wow. Hey now. Wait. <laughs> I think I might have told you guys off air. My daughter is going to the Art Institute of San Francisco starting in August. Oh yes, very, very proud of her. Well, that's great. Fact, I can just hear her coming through the door right now. She's coming to my office. Uh oh. Well, you can have her say hi if you like. <laughs> oh, that's okay. She's uh, she's got she has homework to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm on air talking about you on the radio. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I know Barbara's got a, a ton of questions, and Jeff, uh, I suppose you probably have some also, don't you? Um, not off the top okay. of my head, because uh, I don't know what you've also discussed prior to my getting here. Uh, we didn't get to talk about a whole lot before you got here. Oh, okay. But, uh, Barbara, go for it. Well, okay, I, I want to... Whoop, Barbara left. Hold on. She fell out? I don't know. Sometimes. No. Nah, there she Am is. I still here? Yeah. Skype, yep. Skype does Back. weird things sometimes. Yeah. Uh, the, the worst case that you've heard of that you've aired or you won't air? The worst case. Is it demonic? Do you do demonic cases? Oh, all the time. Okay. There are a number of demonic cases that we've done. That just scare the daylights out of you, especially those with scratchings. You know that that kind of stuff. It's really bizarre stuff. Um, we've done a number of those. I I, I got to tell you something. It's something is so scary that we wouldn't air it. That's never an issue. <laughs> the only the issue, scarier the better. Uh, the scarier. <laughs> well, yeah. But I think I might have alluded to this earlier. We um, we try to uh, have a variety of different stories on the show. We have some that are spiritual, some that are love stories, some that have a great historical, contextual element to them. Uh, stories that are scary and demonic. Uh, did I say love stories? Um, you know, <laughs> um, stories with animals. I mean, there's you know. There's a lot of different stuff that we do. The stories that don't make it to air are stories that we think people are trying to pull the... Wool over your eyes? Exactly. Yeah. And um, it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. And generally speaking, you see it coming at you. You know, it's somebody who wants to promote this haunted place that they own. Um so they can you know, get people to come in to investigate. Because they want people to come in and yeah. people to go there. They, you know, it's all about using our show for some kind of self-promotion, which right. you know, I, I will never allow to happen. And I have an extremely smart and experienced staff who they see it coming. Well, that's the question. Do you, do you do any background fact-checking? Do you have your own set of paranormal people that you contact and say, is this possible? Do you believe this? Do you analyze the stuff brought to you? Yeah, we do. We analyze it to a point because the hallmark of our show, and, and I think what makes it work, is we allow people to tell their experiences. 
and we don't we don't get in the way of that. If they believe it, and if it seems believable, and if the evidence appears to be um, uh, real, you know, if it appears logical. to be yeah logical, then and if they're good storytellers, then you know we'll do the story. Well, now, have you come across? a lot of people with good stories that they don't have any video evidence with. Well, it happens all the time. People contact us and say, we had this great story, but, but as I said before, the, the, the what makes my ghost story work is that... It's got a visual it, evidence. It, it, ha it has that visual evidence element to it. That's what makes our program work. Now... A number of times I've had our executive A&E say, you know, I don't really see that. And um, we always say, yeah, but they do. They see something in that that connects them to their grandfather or their father or their ex-wife or whatever it might be. Well, that's the other thing is a lot of times when I've seen the show – uh, a lot of the footage that airs seems to be very, um, I mean, it's usually handheld, but it's really badly handheld. So it looks like, well, they're, like they're trying to do Blair Witch Cubed or something. Um, and a lot of times, I'm, I too, I'm like, what, what are they seeing that I'm not? Right. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the that's what we're always dealing with is because, a lot of these these are just regular folk. They're not they, that you know. They're not sh shooting. In fact, half the time when they were shooting this stuff, they're scared out of their minds, and it's moving all over the place. And we do our best to um, show and edit the footage in its best light. But there's a point where we can't um, change it. Yeah, you don't want it to look doctored or anything. Right. Exactly. Or if we did that, we would lose all credibility. Right. All credibility, and we have a, and we have great credibility out there. So I don't know why I'm having that, such a hard time with that word credibility. <laughs> uh, it's still early out there, though. What is it? Yeah. Uh, six o'clock, something like that. Yeah. 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 It's six o six o eight to be exact. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I know that. Uh, when I go to do an investigation, I don't get to do a lot, but when I do get to go, uh, usually about the only thing I have is my recorder, and I get EVPs. Uh, I don't have a video camera that I'm usually trying to video stuff. So most of the stuff that I ever catch is what you would call personal experiences. Uh, the EVPs, yeah, that's, you know, you got audio, but than uh, anything else that happens uh, with me, anything I might see, anything that might touch me, is all just uh, uh, considered a personal experience. So I imagine... Yeah, well, I think some of our best evidence is stuff that's supplied by investigators because they tend to be experienced at, you know, capturing this kind of stuff. Right. And, of course... The best evidence is security cameras. That's just oh, amazing yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing stuff. You, you know, can always tell when I was going to say you can I, always tell when Henry's Henry's experiences are real because you can start hearing him scream. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you ain't never heard that. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> you haven't played one yet, but. Uh. Sorry. uh I, I know that you'd mentioned to me that you are now uh, looking for stories over in England and uh, all parts over there, uh, I guess Australia, New Zealand. Uh, Other. Yeah. yeah, let me tell you what's going on. Um, firstly, um, the episodes of My Ghost Story that we produce here in Los Angeles they are seen all over the world, um, all over Europe, England, uh, in the Middle East, Southeast Asia, 
uh, Latin America. I mean, the the show is literally taken off all over the world. Um, there are also um, episodes of my ghost story that are being produced in Southeast Asia out of Singapore. And there are also episodes of my ghost story that are being produced in Latin America out of uh, Buenos Aires. So it really, Amy is very pleased with it in that it's it has a it it it's worked well internationally. What I've convinced them to do, as of recent, is to allow me to produce show uh, stories. Um, that are international in nature and put them in my ghost story. So we've already done two from England, I think three from Canada. We have one coming up from Australia, another one from Ireland. And um, it's really my way of trying to find another way to make the show a bit different right? So and it, so it, so it can be promoted. So if indeed any of your listeners are overseas and want to submit a story, all they got to do is go to my ghost story at mppt.tv, send us an email, or go to the bio website. There's a, there's a link at the bio website to, to uh, send us a story, and we'd, we'd, we'd love to do it. Now, uh, I, I do know that uh, most of the time we do have listeners in the uh, U.K., uh, Switzerland, I think. Uh, sometimes we get one from Spain, from Finland. Uh, we get them uh, all around, kind of. So uh, Australia, uh, we have listeners from everywhere. So that yeah, we just found a great story in Australia. It takes place in a bakery. In, in a bakery. That'd be yeah, a good place and, for one. Uh, to take there's place. all these flying cupcakes. Uh, wow! On sec- on security cameras. And like, they have it on cra- camera. Crazy. Oh wow! Was this during the day or like after dark or after closing? After dark. After dark, oh, middle of night. Wow. Which they probably wouldn't have been actually anybody in there. Exactly. Wow. You know that, that that's pretty interesting. Which, like you that. can imagine that they come in in the morning and there are all these cupcakes like all over the place. Like how this happen? <laughs> And they look at the security footage, and it's like they're flying off by themselves. That's a good story. Well, I'm going to uh, be Back to Barbara. Back. Yes. I couldn't write this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, flying cupcakes would be a stretch, yes, in anybody's imagination. <laughs> I mean, have you ever thought of the notion of flying cupcakes in your life? No, I haven't. Well, no, I no. have to tell you this story because I visit several different paranormal websites, and there was a woman on who claimed that she had cupcakes in the house and they were possessed. They kept moving. So maybe she was right. <laughs> wow. If, if, you know what? If she has video evidence of that, tell her to get a hold of us. That's a great story. Maybe we can do like a, a special cupcake <laughs> episode. Haunted now, cupcakes. Now I know uh, cupcakes from hell. <laughs> I'm going to be getting a couple of cameras uh, before long. So uh, uh, there's this uh, one place I've been invited to go investigate, and from what I understand, they've been seeing quite a bit of stuff in that place. Uh, every now and then, they see this old woman at the kitchen sink doing dishes. Uh, uh, they hear uh, people talking. They hear footsteps. Uh, all kinds of stuff. So maybe I'll be able to catch something like that. So I'm working on it. Hey, if you do, give us a call. I'll do that, definitely. We'll fly out. We can meet. <laughs> that sounds great. I'll get to Which meet would be Jeff. great because then you get to meet me. Yeah, I haven't never got to met, meet uh, Jeff or Barbara yet. So. Oh, wow. You guys just know each other from over the radio. Yep. Yep. Sure have. Uh, met all of them on Para X. And uh, uh, the person that... Uh, Originally was my co-host. Uh, she was doing so many different things. Uh, she had to step down because uh, it was just taking up too much of her time. Hmm. And uh, when that happened, then I started looking for other co-hosts, and uh, 
I come up with uh, Jeff and Barbara. She uh, fills in as co-host with us because one of the other co-hosts travels uh, to different conventions and can't be here. So we keep it covered pretty good. And we just, uh, we're just a laid back show, like to have fun and chit chat with our guests. So uh, everybody uh, really likes the program and I'm not doing a thing to change it. So. There one, you thing go. That's a, one thing that's a shame, Mark, is um, I've, I've been to several haunted theaters here in Los Angeles. Uh, the downtown theater, uh, which just premiered the Raven last night, uh, went by on the bus. I'm like, oh, they premiered it there. Uh, but I, I shot a commercial in there, and I had a ghostly experience down in one of the men's bathrooms. I spoke with the secretary of the Historical Society, and she listed a whole slew of experiences. One of it's included the one I had. Um, plus the Matrix Theater on Melrose has got uh, at least uh, one or two shadow people walking really? around. I had my um, my friend. I know that theater. Do you, do you know if there are any um, if there's any evidence that's been I, recorded there? I don't know, but uh, like I say, it's been anecdotal. My friend Pamela Salem, um, who who is back in on the East Coast now, she was doing a rehearsal of a thriller, and a shadow person walked right between she and her co-star, who were facing each other on stage, just like wow. just walked right between them uh, in front of their fa- both their faces. They're like, oh, what? And they had a prop well t- tube in the set that was so that one of the actresses would, would fall through. Um, and while they were there by themselves, they just heard this knocking, pum, 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 coming from inside. And they're like, please be the stage manager just trying to freak us out. And there was nothing in there doing wow. it. Wow. Well, I'm writing this down, as you say so, because uh, I'm going to have uh, one of my researchers look into the Matrix Theater. All yeah. right, there you go. Well, no, I know that theater very well. Uh, I tell you, um, well, we actually got started a little bit late, so we can run a little little longer before we take our other break. Uh, Whatever you want to do, I'm yours. Oh, that's that's fine. <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing good. Uh, I know in the past uh, <laughs> month or so, uh, you've, been on a media uh, blah, blah, blah. there. Let's try it again. You've wow. been on a, a media blitz uh, from being on shows such as the Paranormal View. Have you gotten uh, a lot of response from those uh, with uh, people wanting to do stories on your show? Yes. Yes. There's been a there's been a noticeable uptick in uh, in re- response to me sort of putting putting the word out. And uh, you know, all, I, I think I might, might have mentioned earlier. This, I've been doing this because it's a it, it's a it's a wonderful show that gets wonderful ratings, but it's a hard show to promote because there's no host, there's no celebrities. Um, I mean, I've been on shows and people call in and say, "Oh wow, I had no idea this exist existed." And, well, um, I'll I tell you what. That's I- great. Uh, if you want to make a short 30-second commercial or something like that, uh, do that, send it to me, and we'll air it over our shows. How does that sound? That sounds great. That sounds great. Now, are you on Facebook yourself, or I know the show is. The show is. I'm not on, I'm not on Facebook myself. Okay. There is a Wikipedia reference to you on Facebook as well. So There might be. Oh, I know my, <laughs> my, my bio was on Facebook. Wikipedia, and uh-huh. then for some reason it got removed, and <gasps> I've been having one of my staff try to get it reinstated, but I think somebody tried to, I, th- I, th- I think somebody hacked it, I don't know. <laughs> now, when you, the people that are responding to you, uh, what kind of demographic is it? Is Does it go from everybody? Great question, great question. Um, let me tell, I'm going to tell you exactly what the demo is for a and bio. I'm not, personally, I would like to broaden it, um, but 65% of the people who watch my ghost story are women, mm-hmm. and their average age is 45, mm-hmm. which, by the way, is exactly what bio is looking for. 
bio is a slightly female skewing um, network that covets women who are 30, 40, and 50. So we're sort of hitting it over the head. And I would assume that most of the, or a lot of the men who are watching are probably with a woman and watching the show hoping to get laid. (laughs) <laughs> uh, I, by the I, way I, I just said that for a fact I don't really believe that I just <laughs> was, hoping, I was hoping to make you guys laugh well you did that's okay when you were saying you know they were looking for a specific age group and all this I'm thinking they should really just check eHarmony <laughs> nah there you go alright I tell you what with that I think what we'll do is we're going to take us another break and uh, I, I didn't think to tell you the, the first time. But I noticed. When, when we're on break, our mics are live. I don't have sophisticated equipment to be able to mute everything. <laughs> oh, then I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> so, <coughs> excuse me, but uh, I guess, uh, Barbara, I guess it's your turn then if Jeff already did his. Yep. Okay, you're listening to the Paranormal View on Para-X Radio. Stay tuned after this break with some flash from the 60s and 70s hits from Henry Foister. (laughs) 